For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is okay. one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Let's accept, right, that at some point, about 13, 14 billion years ago, there was nothing. There was no space for the nothing to be in. There was no darkness, no light, no, no, nothing. OK, literally nothing, except what is nearly a point in space that contained everything in the known universe, OK? Suddenly, that exploded. And in a matter of minutes, the universe was pretty much as it is now. And in all the debris, in all the dust, things started to cling together one of which was the Earth. Can I have Carl pick up the story from there? Um, probably nothing for quite a bit. OK. Yeah. Just sort of floated about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it wasn't causing a problem because it wasn't annoying anyone. No. You see, we don't get a chance of that these days. No. You pop something down, someone says, move that. <laughs> Dangerous, what is it? Yeah. Back then, nothing. So it's hanging around. And if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it. Right. OK, if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it, yeah? Yeah, something something had to sort of happen, didn't it? I'll tell you what it's like. Go on. In the same way, um, penicillin Go on. happened. Go on. It was, the bread was sat there, it goes off. Mm. Air would have uh, created the greenness. <laughs> oh, God! This sounds like the Bible! That is, that is like the Bible! Air I'm learning here, I'm learning. And once you've got something, that yeah. leads to otherness. <laughs> this is like this is like a monk that's who sat down. Oh, We're all sat cross-legged listening to the yeah, wise old man. I know. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna write uh, a thing of how everything was created. But hang on, carry really? on, because I'm interested. Yeah. Well, so where are we? So, so we've got so we've got we had greenness and now we've got so something. So the air created the greenness, and then what is it? Then we have what was just it? otherness Other, from otherness. the greenness. Right. Because once you've got once from you've other, got from greenness comes otherness. Once you've got one thing, others come. Yes. <laughs> the yeah, air created the greenness. <laughs> then you got otherness. If you create something, others will come. Build it and they will but come. But it's sort of, it's sort of right in the. Yeah, no, 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 what would I see? Um, not that much. You wouldn't want to stay. But there's greenness. Little little patches little of greenness. Little patches of greenness, OK. Little bit of rubble knocking around. <laughs> a bit of rubble. There was a bit of rubble, OK. Um, We've still got a long way to go. We want to get to life, don't we? OK, so let's, let's, get, so, let's skip forward so, then, so, to life. So everything was right, OK? It was the right distance from the sun. OK. Yeah, but even if it, it wasn't, way, we'd, it, we'd, have, we'd have still been creating. No, we wouldn't. We would, something no, we would have done. No, we wouldn't. Have. I want to hear Carl's opinion on this, Rick. I'm not interested in facts. I want to hear Carl's so opinion. So are you saying um, if if the atmosphere right around the Earth wasn't about 99% uh, percent nitrogen oxygen with 1% other gases, we'd have still had something else? Something would have been around. I'm not saying it might, it might it might be better than us, it might be worse than us. What would it look like? Um, well, it's, it's hard to say because they say, don't they, that it's the conditions that mould you into the shape and colour sure. and, uh, you know, everything else that makes you the person that you are. OK, let's take Pluto. We know that's the farthest away. So it's, it is dark and cold there. Right. What, how do you imagine the creatures that will develop there? Will Big eyes like? and airy. <laughs> How did they evolve, though? Because we evolved... They can't just... Hang on. You yeah. always say yeah. animals change to suit the conditions. I'd have thought if, if it's dark, you don't need eyes because things that live underground or at the bottom of the ocean, they don't, they don't have um, eyes or, uh, or, or colour because there's no point. 
Yeah, but what I'm talking about, are we saying we're living inside Pluto or on the top of it like we do here? Why would we live inside Pluto? Well, no, I it, it, I can, it can support life, full stop. But but um, this I mean, is one of the most ridiculous conversations we've ever had. Seriously, because everything based on a ridiculously false premise. No, Carl, we're saying now right. that the world's overcrowded. Right. There's too many people on it. Right. We're running out of houses. People are living in basements. Now that's only one step away from from being molish. <laughs> we're already going underground because we're running out of space. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Right. Come on. Keep I want to hear his point. Is yeah. that being garbage? <laughs> so, uh, what you're saying is people they don't acknowledge the the crust of the earth. So you're saying within five years there's going to be sort of mole-like people living in basement flats well, with well, no eyes. But hold on, though. In your, in your, in, according to you, the lower they go, the colder and darker they go, the hairier and better eyes they'll have. Uh, well, it depends. Now I was only saying they'd have better eyes if they're on a dark planet where they're outside, so they still have to look out for things that they could trip over. If we're going, if we're going, <laughs> if we're going underground... They're around. their sole concern. <laughs> That's the whole evolution is about what we don't want to trip over. <laughs> I don't want to graze my knees. You've got knees. they got them on Earth. Coincidence, isn't it? Hub, hub. Do you recycle? I don't really do all that. I don't separate stuff. I don't sort of put there's the cans, there's, there's the paint. You don't do that? You just throw it away, do you? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's not recycling, that annoys they can't me. do anything with that. That annoys me when you're just putting it in landfill, mate. Come on. Yeah. But I haven't got all the bins. There isn't enough room for all the bins. Yeah, we have to do... You've got yeah, a recycle yeah. box you stick outside. Yeah. What are you on about? Recycle box, yeah. I haven't got one. Well, no, you've got, to, you've got to ask for one. I tried to get rid of a, um, a sofa, right? I was getting a new sofa, add the old one. You try and get rid of one of them, it's murder. I called up the council, said I want to get rid of it. They said, we're not coming around there till Friday. It was like a Monday. I said, it's in the way. So I put it outside. They said, you put it outside, you'll get a fine. I said, yeah, but you don't know when I'm going to put it outside. <laughs> yeah. So it's not outside my house. Yeah. So they said, well, if you do that, we've got your number What's the now. sofa like? It's a beige one. Well, if we see that. <laughs> so um, they said, if you, if you want to pay to have it collected, we can come and get it tomorrow, 30 quid. I said, I'm not paying for it. It's madness. Yeah. So, hung up, annoyed, called me dad up. He said, oh, I saw this thing on the telly saying that you can donate your furniture to people who haven't got a sofa. Look it up on the internet. So I looked it up. There's a firm that does it. Right. Uh, right, cheeky sods. Called them up, said, I've got this sofa here. I want to donate it to someone who hasn't got a sofa. He said, uh, oh, what's it like? Is it in good condition? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. Well, why are you getting rid of it? <laughs> I said, because uh, we've moved into a bit of a bigger place and the sofa looks daft in the corner. It's, it's too small, so I'm getting a bigger one. There's nothing wrong with it. How big is it? How many people does it sit? So it depends how big you are. You can sit two people on it, but it's not the comfiest. But it's, it's in good condition. It's none of your nonsense-like stuff. It was expensive right. when I bought it. He said, right. He said, uh, is it safe? I said, what do you mean? He said, is it fag-proof? So I said, I don't smoke. He said, well, go and get the um, lift the thing up. He's got me running around looking at my sofa. <laughs> when I, I'm giving it away, I had to lift it up. It had a picture of a fag on it. I said, yeah, it's got a picture of a fag on it. And, uh, <laughs> could, I, could I just um, point out, uh, fag is a slang for cigarette. When he says, is it fag-proof, he's not going to open the cushion and someone's go, you it's me! <laughs> <laughs> so I should explain that straight away. <laughs> so anyway, it turned out it was fag-proof. He came and picked it up, took it away. Uh, that was that. <laughs> but look at the hassle. Look at the hassle it takes to get rid of something. And then they say to you, do not be dumping stuff on the street. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that thing of having to wait for certain days of the week and you can't always keep hold of something. Till a certain day of the week, because it's big. A mattress is a, it's one of them things you can't get sort of rid of. Or you can't stick it somewhere, because no. it's in the way. It's a big, clumpy bit of furniture, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, There's not a bit of furniture, really, a mattress, <laughs> but I know what you mean. Well, it's <laughs> a, new, a new sideboard. Yeah, don't, don't, don't lean on it. It's a bit, it's a bit spongy. Right. What do you keep in it? We can't keep anything in it. It's just full of springs and stuff. <laughs> no, but you it's know what really I mean? It's a piece of furniture, to be honest. Well, it's it should of... be on a bed, to be honest. <laughs> it's part of a furniture bit, isn't it? Did I tell you that time when... I don't think you could even ever count a mattress as a piece of furniture. <laughs> of course you can. It's functional. And where do you stop? Is a pillow a piece of furniture? <laughs> is is a, 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 a blanket? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nice bit of furniture you're wearing. They're my trousers. <laughs> They're furniture if you pop them up against a wall. <laughs> Did I tell you that time when we first bought a flat? Go on. We bought a flat in Manchester, right? And yeah. You, you know, when you first buy a place, it's expensive, isn't it? And it's a big bit of furniture, a flat, isn't it? So, you know, we bought a sofa, we got a table. Mm. 
So you don't mean you bought a sofa? You ended up with a table? No, no. no you bought, bought a sofa, sofa and a table. Yeah, a table. Said, yeah. Now I was, I was, I didn't, I didn't know. Suzanne said you to buy a sofa. You yeah. came back with a table. Now back then I wasn't as wise as I am now. <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh, what was he? Some snot in a jar. <laughs> Can I just apologise to any snot in a jar that's listening and was offended by that comment? All right. So, so I ordered a bed. I ordered a bed. Yeah. It turned up. Oh, well done. Fucking hell, that's a I big thought, treat. I thought... <laughs> went down Jean Green this that's time. That's the end of the story, is it? <laughs> so I thought, I thought, oh. I'm going to get this in the bedroom, set it all up. Suzanne comes home from work, the bed's done, she'll be well happy. Yeah. yeah. So I get it all up there in the lift and what have you. It seems like I'm missing something there. Put it together, no mattress. <laughs> How did you not notice there was no mattress? No, just because it's like, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, I've got all the screws, I've got the slats for that at the bottom, there's, there's the post and that. I'll put it together. Where's the right. softy, spongy bit of furniture that usually sits on top of the uh, the more rigid bit of furniture? So I called them up and said, there's no mattress with it. He said, no, it's not part of it. So what do you mean it's not part of it? A bed isn't a bed without a mattress. It's, it's a climbing frame, right? <laughs> so um, they said, they said uh, you know, you can buy one. We have got them in for that thing. But it was like 400 odd quid. And I don't know why you're telling me this. I know this. this is, I've walked beds. I understand this is how it works. The mattress isn't but, a bed. No, the, the bed is something else. Yeah, yeah, but that's wrong. You cannot use a bed without a mattress, is what I'm saying. So don't sell it without it. No, but some people replace the bed frame that's with fine. and keep that's the old fine. mattress. That's fine. Around. Once you've invested in it and you go, oh, will I buy a new bed or will I just buy a new mattress? Fine. Well, they're not going to keep selling beds with new mattresses in case you've already got a mattress. What? A bed and a mattress without any pillars and blankets is no good, but you don't expect that to come with well, it. At least you can sleep on that. You can sleep on a spongy bit. You can chuck a coat over you. You can yeah, use a cushion off a sofa. They're not thinking some fuckwit might buy it without the mattress. We might include it. So anyway, so I was like, oh, I didn't think of this. <laughs> I didn't think of this. So I called my dad up. I didn't think of this. So I called my dad up. Dad, it's your fuckwit son again. All right, son, how's it going? <laughs> what have you done? Bought a bed without a mattress? <laughs> oh. So I said, listen, I bought that bed. There's no mattress on it. Can, you know, can you get us one? So he said, oh, I'll, I'll have a word. I'll call around, <laughs> right? So he calls back, like, an hour and a half later. He said, uh, got your mattress. Uh, go down to Alf's. Alf is me sort of uncle who isn't an uncle. Oh, right. right. Uh, he's the one who I've told you about who had two tellies. One that worked picture-wise, <laughs> one that worked for the sound. <laughs> Slept in a rubber dinghy, right? <laughs> now, yeah. the thing is... I remember, Alf, yeah. He, uh, he said, yeah, 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 I've uh, got a mattress, come and get it. So I go Where's down he... there. Why doesn't he sleep on the fucking mattress if he's got one? Why does he sleep in a fucking boat if he's got a mattress? He's terrified of flooding. Yeah. Uh, I get there and uh, it's in his van. Right. He's sorry, he's driving around with a mattress in the back of a van. Why is he a fucking serial (laughs) killer? So I thought Suzanne's going to be happy. Dragged it out of the van, chucked it in the car. Thought she won't even know. Do you know what I mean? No. So, uh, yeah. so I dragged that back. And, you know, am I going to make it to rush hour by this point? And, you know, she's going to get home. Anyway, get home, drag it into the lift and what have you. Drag it up, drag it into the bedroom, stick Dead it on. Shoot things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sheet on it and that. <laughs> Suzanne comes in. Uh, she goes, "What is that smell?" Oh. So I said, "What?" <laughs> she said, "It's like." Oil and diesel. Hold on, why didn't you smell it? <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. I think I'd just sort of got used to... Maybe it, because I got in the back of the van, <laughs> smelt that, thought that's in the van, then I got used to that smell. Yeah. It's in the back of my car, folded yeah. up. I'm, yeah. I'm concentrating on trying to get this bed made before she gets in. Sure. Uh, so anyway, she's going, what is it? I said, I've got this off Alf. She said, we can't have that. She said, you no. know, it's a new flat, nice, clean flat and everything. We've got this old thing that stinks. Get rid of it. It was murder getting rid of that. And I had to tip it. I right. went round the back of some supermarket and left it there. Because you call fly around... Tipping. Illegal fly tipping. Well, no, because I think it's illegal and bad when, you, when you're chucking it out, say, at a bus stop or somewhere on a high street or something, and people are going, that looks a mess. I chucked it near the bins at a supermarket. I'd gone out of my way. I thought, where is this not going to be offensive? Why couldn't you just go on the tip? I think I did try the tip. Oh, no. No, there was a massive queue. It was uh, a massive queue. Uh, laziness, so laziness, Rick, a sorry. Queue at the tip? A massive queue. Where I remember was it now. Stratford. Oh, Stratford, that was. Why is there a queue for the tip? I don't know. I remember, oh. yeah. I remember driving past it and I haven't got time for that. And um, that was. That's so don't go on about you couldn't get rid of it. It's because you could be asked to queue up, you lazy bastard. 
Um, Couldn't get rid of it. But what was he thinking? Why was he panicking? One, why did he get a bed without a mattress? Two, why does he call his dad to get him out of mattress-related problems? <laughs> his dad goes, Alf, Alf's got one in the back of a dirty old fucking van. <laughs> Oh, wait, that should be all right. No, but the thing is, what I'm saying is, when I was in that bed shop and I'm going, oh, yeah, good bed, good bed, I'm sitting on it, I'm sitting on a mattress with it, at no point did he say, now, have you thought about what sort of mattress you want? Have you got orthopedic problems or whatever? That didn't come up. He said, there's your order, there's your address. I'm not a bed man. I go to the bed man to get bed advice. In the same way, same problem here. I've had work done recently with... Uh, Dad, what? How to get rid of a body? Let me call out. <laughs> I've worked done recently. Right? Bathroom retiled. Yeah. Right? It's been a nightmare. Polish fella. Right. Not a word of English, which makes it hard. Mm. I've got him in as a professional to do it. He's sticking grout down the toilet. <laughs> you know, when after they put like the grout in the tiles to finish it off, yeah. anything that's left, he didn't put it in the bin and get dispose of it properly. Mm. He stuck it down the toilet. Yeah. And now it's there, the grout's there at the bottom of the toilet. Is it really? Yeah, with a screw in it. Well, you can drain it, can't you? You can turn the water off, get rid of it. Drain the water. No, it won't seem to go around the U bend. Well, it's no, you'd there. get it out there. You'd dry it off when you say there's no water in there. Well, just stick your hand in there. Get your hand in there. Why don't you put a, a well, barrel Last time off. I did that, once, last time you called up when I had my hand down a grid, and you were going, What are you doing? Get someone out to do that. You called up here. I was up to my shoulder, Steve, in like glunge. <laughs> <laughs> well, what annoys me, Rick, is he makes up his own words. Well, I'm going to use that for flannels, mate. Do you know the carrier bag problem? Sure. I was in I was in the supermarket, yeah. and uh, it's that point when they'd uh, they turned round and said, "Do you want a carrier bag?" And I said, "Yeah, I bought like milk, loaf, I bought some uh, pikelets." Some uh, what? <laughs> That's a pikelet. It's like a thin crumpet. <laughs> <laughs> I think you told me that before. Oh, the the it. It. Yeah, yeah. There's a word I'd get rid of. Pikelet. There's a word I would get rid of. Thin crumpet. I've got time to say thin crumpet. I do yeah. not need a specific, specific thin word. Thin crumpet. Uh, uh, these, these, that's not a crumpet. Why? Too thin. <laughs> Call it a pikelet. The thing is, I'd, I'd spent over a tenner anyway. Right. right. I get to the till. What, it, can you make a, a pikelet by squashing a crumpet thin? <laughs> It's tough what? to. I've oh, tried that. What if you cut one in half? No, it doesn't. It's not the same. No? I've, I've tried how squashing thick a crumpet. How dense is a crumpet that you need a thin Depends one. where you go. They've got thicker. I'm not. I'm not enjoying the thicker crumpet at the moment. <laughs> Why? Because the outside burns and the inside does nothing. It's like eating dough. I've, I've cut them out of my diet. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, well, you you're straight to pikelets now, is it? It's also pikelets. because it's not the 1950s anymore. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I bought all this stuff. It's over a tenner. Uh, she said, you want a carrier bag? I said, of course I do with all this, you know. Yeah. Uh, she said, five pence. I said, you what? She said, five pence for a carrier bag. I said, I come here all Good. the time for the pikelets. I'm, no, I'm right behind this. Right behind this. Mm. Why? Charging for carry bags, yeah, absolutely. Think, like, Lazy bastards. I take carry bags down the supermarket every time I go down there. Yeah, we've got a drawer full of carry reuse, bags. Reuse. I use no, them. Reuse Steve, can I put, just put a question in? Go on. I do normally, I oh. reuse them. Oh. But I didn't know I was on my way home from work that day. Fine, yeah. so but this is the problem. Up. So mm. be it. So That's you, but come on. Through the nose. 5p, otherwise you carry yeah. one with you. And you've got another one. You got right, another so I said, oh. I said, how's that going to work? How's my five pence going to help the environment? Typical, that is the attitude. That sums it up, and it sums it up. It's the turtles, it's the turtles. Right, yeah. Yeah, turtles, that's right, they get caught up in them, yeah. Terrible. She said, she said... They think they're a jellyfish, and they go, they swallow it, yeah, and choke. So I said, right, so it's all right, I can, I can kill a turtle kind of for five pence. You're not that bothered then. Why do you want to kill what? a turtle at all? Because if carrier bags shouldn't be out there, yeah. ban them. But don't say, you're killing turtles with free carrier bags. If you want to kill a turtle, five pence. Oh, there you go, there's five pence. I don't kill a turtle. <laughs> That's what's annoying me. It's not compulsory though, is it? But what they're saying is that that five pence goes towards something, doesn't it? She said, we can't give you carrier bags anymore because you're killing turtles. See, there's no way. She said, <laughs> we can't give you... Carl Pilkington, stop killing fucking turtles. Five pence. All I'm saying is, if carrier bags are killing turtles, stop making carrier bags. Because the thing is, I can afford two carrier bags. Two turtles are dead since I've been going in there. So, oh, so flash. What? So d does it matter? Does it matter that much or not enough or what? What's the point here? There could be for that 5p, you could get a little fella out there, when he sees a turtle going, he goes and sticks his finger down his throat. But what taste are they getting out of a jellyfish anyway? Wow, <laughs> will they? Carrier bag's better, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, it gives. Oh, 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 it's pikelet. <laughs> Someone threw a perfectly good pikelet away. Talking about the Earth, Carl is going around the Earth. I've only done Egypt so far. And what do you think of it? 
the probably the, the, the greatest and earliest Some civilizations. Greatest, yeah, yeah, yeah but they hang up on about that a lot. Well, yeah. and it's like that's slowing them down. I think. Unlike the English, yeah. we don't drone on about our great past. No, no but we shouldn't. Yeah. I don't think we should. Carl, move on. You go on about doing boxing when you turned up once and got battered by Leroy. Yeah, because you asked me about it. But right. the thing is, they're constantly. It's like they haven't moved on. Uh, everywhere you go, you see the Sphinx or a pyramid on right. something, and it builds it up too much, so that when you actually get there. You feel like you've seen it so many times that it doesn't impress you that much. But I like the, uh, you know, it's it's different. I liked all the, you know, locals and stuff and the way they are and that. And that's that's oh, good, they? isn't it? Oh, they? Just a uh, lot of old people. Yeah. A lot of old and the old and the young mix more than our, our lot do. Uh, there was only a couple of things that I didn't like, and that was uh, the toilets. The toilets are pretty depressing. Sure. Why? What's up with them? Just, um, it's just a hole in the ground, isn't it? Right. And I, I like the toilet, it's sort of, you know, me time. And to sort of go in one of them, you don't want to hang around. It's yeah. sort of, you just want to do the job and get out, but my insides don't work like that. They like to sort of relax a bit. And, <laughs> uh, and you can't do that there, because you've got flies whizzing around your head. And uh, there was one time when we were out and about, and I'd had a bit of hummus or something, because that's you can't get away from all that. Mm. I'd been dipping my bread in it and I suddenly thought, oh, it barely feels funny. I've got to find the toilet. Cut through this market. Didn't know one was there, but you sort of smell it. It's like really? I'm getting close to one. Yeah, it stinks. <laughs> you go in, there's like, like a fella sat there, really old. He must have been about 93, about two teeth. Uh, sat there with a rag and you have to pay him to use the toilet. What's the rag for? He doesn't wipe your ass for you. I don't know. I don't know. But well, the, did he, well, the toilet's never been cleaned by the looks of it. I had to give him like five Egyptian pounds, whatever that is. I don't know how much that is. But I don't know what he's doing for that money. Because the place had never seen a mop. So I go in there, open the door, and it's like one of them holes in the ground. I go, oh, God, can't use that. Push the next door open, that's the same. You know, get to the end one, open it. Normal, normal toilet. All right. Ding dong. Brilliant. Sit down there. Do what I do, look round, no toilet paper. Oh no. He's waving the rag over the top of the cubicle. Yeah. More money. Ten pound. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh god. I'm thinking, can I just get up? Because it was quite a clean, you know, I, I thought. I <laughs> it was to... quite a clean drop, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking. Don't oh, they use water though? Don't they use water? Well, they have a hose pipe, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't it? fancy that. Well, that's cleaner though, isn't it? A hose pipe. I really no, get a proper wash. Ek, Why? Ek. How can it be? <laughs> Why? Because that's just gonna. That's that's not gonna clean it properly. It's gonna get rid of some bits, isn't it? It's like when you clean a car. Yeah, use a hose, but where's a sponge? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So. Uh, yeah, that's so, true. You, oh you rinse I off just, a plate, but then but you I always just, give a little wipe. Exactly, as well. exactly, but I like it. That's when the bloke knocks on the door and goes, "You need sponge?" Yes. <laughs> So I'm in there, I look at the door, there's no handle on the door. So I'm, I'm trapped in there anyway. Someone's wow. nicked the handle. So I can't open the door. I'm sat there, there's no toilet paper. I'm calling, uh, I'm calling like the people I'm out there with. Did you bring, yeah. did they bring you some toilet paper then? Um, no, what well, they got it from the, like, the fella with the... He oh, yeah, money to he had, he had You should have paid for some right. on the way in. So I think yeah. that's what you do. But they don't, they don't give you a full, a full roll. They give you, like, a strip. Right. Which I'm pretty wasteful with toilet paper. Mm, well, I, I prefer learn, to do a good job, use it up, replace <laughs> it, rather yeah. than five sheets. I've never done that in my life. Right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> my brother taught me something. When he was in the army, he said you used to have to sort of put your hand through it, get it all, then use that paper to get it off your hand. What? When you're in the army, yeah. they're taught survival techniques. Right. And they said if you're a court with very little toilet paper. <laughs> the survival technique. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not like. Yeah. What did he die? <laughs> Died of a dirty ass. <laughs> oh. uh, hold on, wait a minute. Right, what is this technique? You get the toilet paper. Right. Use two sheets. Right. Fold it over so you've got. Normally, to one sheet is two ply. You've right. got four ply. Right. So it's, a sort of, it's like a bog glove, a bog paper glove. Yeah, so you put your hand through it so you make a hole. Yeah. What do you mean? Make you a hole. Make a hole so your hand goes through it. Yeah. Then you can wipe your wipe your arse with that. 
What and with then, your hand? Yeah, and then the toilet paper that's left, you pull it off like that and you wipe your fingers with it. Well, so you've still got shit on your hand? <laughs> this is horrible! Yeah, why, don't you just wipe, why don't you just wipe your ass with the toilet paper? Because you've only got a couple of sheets because you're in the jungle, right? And it's survival. Oh, no. so, so, survival so what's the difference between wiping Maybe your you ass wrong. with your hand and trying to get shit off your hand <laughs> or wiping your ass with the toilet paper and pulling your fucking trousers up? <laughs> I don't know why this is a technique. That's some sort of mad sergeant's idea. What I do, boys, is I like to smear shit all over my face and then use the one sheet of toilet to wash my face off. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. Don't Should I suggest something for you? You like wiping your ass with your hand. You don't like paper and water. You like a sponge. One of those big foam hands that you see at sporting, <laughs> sporting events. events. So you just yeah. go in with that, like Kenny Everett. You go in there, <laughs> two big pleasure. You sit down, you wipe your ass, you just leave yeah. them up, you just leave and them And then you can cheer about it as you leave. <laughs> Whatever it will do. Be careful with the giant sponge finger that it doesn't go up the arse and cause damage. That is a problem.